Hark how the bows, sweet silver bows, all seem to say, throw cares away. Christmas is here, bringing good cheer to young and old, meek and the bold. Ding dong, ding dong, that is the song. Good morning, friends. Welcome back to another Vlogmas episode. Today is December 13th. Oh, December 13th. 11 days until Christmas. What in the ever loving heck has happened to December? Doesn't it just feel like it has flown by? Honestly, I feel like that every year. Like once Halloween is over, then it just feels like life just goes on warp speed. But seriously, this year is no different. So anyway, good morning and welcome. I hope you've been enjoying these little vlogs. They definitely have, some of them have been longer. Like I feel like I sit in front of the camera and I can't not talk for less than 10 minutes. Like I just sit here and then I just talk at y'all. And then I'm just like, wow, I didn't mean to talk for 10 minutes, but there I, I did it. So anyway, um, look at my cute Santa sticker that I got from my soda shop. See, it's Santa holding a swig drink. That's the name of the shop. And he's got them all in his sleigh. <laughs> it's so adorable, but I'm like, I don't know if I want to put it on my water cup because it's not Christmas all the times. Anyway, let's do the tea tasting. It is uh, 11 a.m. I just got back from the gym. I always get a uh, Diet Coke with flavorings from that place after the gym. It's just like my favorite thing. Anyway, so today we have some teas that I'm actually very excited about. So the David's Tea is Organic Cinnamon Ruibos Chai, which I'm excited about because I love chai and I also love Ruibos because um, it's an herbal tea with no caffeine, but it tastes, to me, it tastes similar to just like a black tea but I like that it's um, herbal with no caffeine. So, okay, let's taste these. Let's do the David's tea first, the cinnamon rooibos chai. See, I used my clear mug today because I thought it would be pretty. It looks pretty good, huh? I wish that, th that you could see what this says. It says over at AF, but it never shows up on camera. It just looks like a flag, so. That's really very good, honestly. Like this is this is it's a it's a solid cinnamon herbal chai. I like it. it. There's nothing like spectacular about it, but there's also nothing that I'm like you know like some of the David's teas are. So that's a good one. That's solid. It is a little bit boring. Like I don't know why you would choose <laughs> that one, which is probably the most boring tea I've had from David's, but I like it still, like I like boring things. I like boring tea sometimes. <laughs> okay, now let's do the Adagio Maple Cream Oolong. This one smells like a maple donut and maple donuts are my favorite donuts. This one smells really spicy too.
That's delicious. Ugh. I don't know, man. I just really love these teas. It's so good. So good. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about the book that I'm reading because yesterday I finished the vlog by telling you that the audiobook that I was listening to was Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. And I am now 75% of the way through with that. I am obsessed with this story. This book is so beautiful and so powerful. It's like <sighs> every person that I have heard describe this as an epic love story is right on the nose. This is this has such an epic feeling about it. And I think part of that is because of the powerful emotions that they experienced with one another when they were in high school. Because this book, it's all centered around these two people, the main characters, the hero and heroine, they have some very traumatic childhood events that happen in their life. And they're trying to cope with that and trying to survive and live with the trauma that has happened to them. But they're doing it in very self-destructive ways, very dangerous ways. And then they meet one another and they find solace together in high school. They meet when they're 17 and they find a way to heal or to cope in a way that is not as damaging or as um, dangerous. And they find that with one another. And it's beautiful, you know, like, the, so the book is set up in that it starts present day. And then as the story is unfolding, you have these flashback scenes for those seven days and you get more history of why, or not why, but what happened to them in their childhood and how they tried to grow up through that. And it's just achingly beautiful. This is, this is a powerful, beautiful book. And the writing is so captivating. You know, I feel like this bridges, I feel like this has elements of literary fiction in the writing style, women's fiction, because it does follow a large part of the journey is the heroine, Eva, but it also has a really solid romance in it too. And I feel like it's really interesting and just feels so incredibly fulfilling to have all of those genres wrapped up in this one book. It's absolutely beautiful. This is a black romance written by a black author. And it has a lot of themes throughout the book about um, like sexism in writing these are they're both writers, she writes erotic, paranormal type romances, and he writes literary fiction. And that's how they meet again as adults after they've been separated for those seven days. They were they were separated, sort of torn apart, had some really things that that affected how they moved on as adults, you know. So when they meet as adults, they meet at this writer's conference, this black writer's conference, and you can see that like the chemistry is still there, the feelings are still there. What happened when they were 17? had such a soul searing effect on them that they've never forgotten it. And honestly, I love that type of story so much. I just did a video of childhood friends to lovers and there's something that is so completely captivating and compelling for me about couples who meet young. And, and especially at this age when they're like 17, 18, very, very young. And uh, spoiler alert, I met my husband when I was 18 and we've been together for 21 years. But I think there's something that is just so completely beautiful, captivating and hopeful about being that young and finding someone who feels like a soulmate and a true love, like having such a powerfully emotional experience right then that it stays with you your whole life. Oh, I just love that so much. So I loved seeing what that even though all that time had passed, even though they kind of had some hurt feelings about how they ended up, you know, torn apart as teenagers that the love and the chemistry that they had in when they met is still there, you know? So it's just so compelling and so beautiful. The heroine has chronic migraines. So that's also a really big feature of this book. She's dealing with some pretty debilitating chronic pain and watching her have to live with that and sort of the, like the mismanagement of that through her medical diagnosis and even just in her family, like generational, like you can see her mother and her grandmother who also had this and how that kind of has had an effect on how she sees that in her life and how negative feelings she has about herself for being afflicted with this illness, this chronic illness. Like this is a very powerful book. This book feels like the type of book that you read 
and that you will never, ever forget. Like, it's the type of book that just, like, is imprinted on you. And I feel like years from now, I'll see this title, or I will see it on my shelf or something, because I'm definitely going to buy a copy of this book. <laughs> and I'll be taken right back to how it felt when I was reading it the first time. Like, it's a very beautiful, powerful story about life, about a little bit about race, a little bit about sexism, but most of all, about love and about a very soulmate healing level of love and how that impacts your entire life. It's fantastic. Honestly, it is pretty heavy. Like it deals with some things that feel, um, that, that feel like they would be in a literary fiction novel. Like some of the events that these characters go through, some of the things that they use to try and cope. It's, it's very heavy and hard to read, but I can't help but feel like the overall theme throughout this whole book, like it's just threaded with hope. And it's based on the fact that they met each other and they had these powerful feelings and th this little spark of love has just been pulling them together and keeping them hopeful and going on in their life. Another thing that is really interesting or fun about, th that is a little fun about this book is that these two people, they're writers, and they've been, because of the impact that that young love had on them, throughout their whole life, their careers, they've been writing about each other as characters in their books. And the other one knows it. Like, they know, that's me you're writing about, you know? So that is really, really fun. The dialogue in this is clever. Like, this book is, is sharp and witty and just... I am a huge fan, if you can't tell. I don't know. It's just everything that I... I feel like it's like filling a hole in me. Like this is this is the type of book that I've been wanting. You know, this is the epic scale, beautiful, thought provoking. Really, just it's fantastic. I love it. I'll be very surprised if this isn't a five star. So, yeah, that's what I'm reading. Kind of obsessed about it. Gushed about it for ten minutes, but just so good, y'all. I can't stop thinking about it. Okay, so I also got some book mail today. I have a lot of mail, a lot of book mail that just showed up on my porch that I'm excited about. So I'm going to show it with you. So this is my book of the month order. And this is, so this month I got mostly just um, thrillers because I didn't really see any romances that I wanted. And honestly, I don't love, I don't know. I need, I say this every time I do a book of the month unboxing, I just need to cancel because I just don't read these books very much, but then I get sucked in and I'm like, ooh, that sounds interesting. So this book, Razor Blade Tears, I have been hearing a little bit of talk about, like, I don't stay in the thriller mystery book world much. I'm solidly implanted in romance, but I didn't even know about this book until my friend Ollie from Criminali. I'll have him linked down below if you want to check him out. He is so clever and so just witty and funny a little self-deprecating, and he's just delightful to watch. And he did actually do a video where he read a historical romance novel that I recommended to him, and it was delightful. So when he did that video, I asked him, okay, I will do the same for you. I, I would love to read and vlog a book that you would recommend to me. So he recommended Razor Blade Tears, and I am very excited about this one. So I have it. I don't really know much about it at all other than Ollie recommended it to me and I think Ollie has solid recommendations. So, very excited about this one. Ollie, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna vlog it, it'll be good. And then the other book that I got, I really just got because the cover intrigued me and it's a flicker in the dark. This is also a thriller. Something about when Chloe Davis was 12, six teenage girls went missing in her small Louisiana town. By the end of the summer, her own father had confessed to the crimes and was put away for life. Now, 20 years later, Chloe is a psychologist getting ready for her wedding, and a local teenage girl goes missing again, and another, that terrifying summer, comes crashing back. So this sounds pretty good, but again, like, I don't know when I will get to that. So every so often, I feel like I want to read a thriller, and then I'll pick one up, and then I'm like, nah, I'm back to romance, you know? <laughs> Okay, and then I got um, my influencer box from Avon, which I'm very excited about. I got some books from them. I cannot wait to see what they sent me. Very, very excited. Oh, look at this. I got a physical copy of this Megan Frampton book. I have already read this. It was very steamy, the steamiest I've read from her. The cover is stunning. 
I gave this three stars. I didn't freaking love it, but I'm very happy to have a physical copy. It's beautiful, and I really do like Megan Frampton. This book just wasn't my favorite from her. Okay, and then they sent me... Ooh! Okay, this one I'm very excited about because this is a historical romance author that I have not read before. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Yes, Avon, this is the type of cover we want. Oh my gosh, I love it. I've never read Lisa Byrne. I am in obsessed with this cover. Julia Quinn blurbed it on the front. She said, one of the most exciting new historical writers in a long time, The Redemption of Philip Thane. Y'all know I love a redemption arc. So this is Philip Thane, rogue, rake, scoundrel extraordinaire, hadn't wanted to visit some dumpy provincial town to give a speech, but he'd struck a devil's bargain with Henrietta Penhall, the imperious family matriarch, nor did he expect that once he got there, he'd somehow be living the same day over and over again. It's strange. It's terrible. <laughs> a little bit of Groundhog Day. On the other hand, it is giving him time to cozy up to the delectable, brainy Margaret Allen in town to research the book she's writing. Philip is sure she'll fall starry-eyed into his arms, just as women always do. But to his amazement, Miss Allen stands firm against his wiles day after day. How can she resist his seductive charm? Why won't she change her mind? What must he do to win her heart? Maybe, just maybe, it isn't Margaret who needs to change, but rather a certain rogue in love for the first time in his life. I love that. So this is exciting. Two beautiful historical romances with the absolute most gorgeous covers. I am obsessed with them. I think I like this one a little bit more. Just gorgeous. So thank you so much, Avon, for sending me those. Very excited. And then this clip is so long. This might be just a one day vlog. <laughs> and then I got this absolutely stunning box from Maggie Cole, bringing you Alphalicious Book Boyfriends. Author Maggie Cole. Maggie's the... What does that say? Maggie's the literary master of steamy romance. Very, very excited. Look at how beautiful that is. Oh, I'm so excited. Thank you so much, Maggie, for sending me this. Let us see. Okay. I'm so excited. I, I've read Maggie's books before. I think she, I love one of my favorite books of hers is, um, oh my heck, I can't even remember the name of it. Ruthless, not creatures, Ruthless Stranger. So good. I love that. Ugh. I'm so excited. This is beautifully packaged. It was so kind of her to send me these. I'm just absolutely thrilled. And you know, I actually have been thinking like I really want to read another Mafia book. So kind of in the mood for that. Very, very excited. The box is beautiful. Like I don't want to get rid of the box. And she sent me a cord. Awesome. Cool, cool, cool. So she sent me, this is amazing. She sent me the first three books in the Mafia Wars series, which is fantastic. This is the book I was talking about. This is one of my favorite, favorite books of hers. I just love this book so much. This is a heroine who goes to, oh, look, they're signed too. Yay. Thank you so much, Maggie. I'm so excited about that. So, and then this, the next one, I, I know I haven't told you what these are about. This is a great one. This is a Friends to Lovers uh, Mafia Romance. Ugh, I love that book so much, too. This one is very steamy. I've read this one, too. Cruel Enforcer. I really love the heroine in this. She's a super strong attorney, kind of a bad A, and he is, like, so smitten with her. It's delicious. I am so thrilled with these books. This is absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much, Maggie. I can't wait to read them. I mean have them under my shelves. I have read these three, but I am so, so thrilled to have these in my position. All right, this was a super long clip. I'll come back once I finish reading Seven Days in June, and that may be all I, all I include for this vlog, because I don't want it to be too long, you know? Anyway, I'll see y'all in a bit. Thanks for watching. <laughs>
friends welcome back to uh, another day of vlogmas today is December 14th these days are just a flying by I cannot believe it I did finish a book I finished seven days in June and I'll talk about that right after the tea tasting let's do that first look it's day 14 Boop. all you have to do with these cameras is cover your <laughs> Watch, now it's not going to do it. Cover your face, and then it will focus on the object in your hand. If you have an autofocus camera. Anyway, I'm not excited about one of these teas today. It is literally, literally one of my least favorite flavors in the entire world. But it's fine. We're going to taste it, because we're not quitters. We're going to taste it, and then we're probably going to chuck it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wonder which uh, cup I put it in. Hmm. That's... Okay, yeah, that's definitely what that is. Let's see this one. Blech. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> if you were watching the B-roll, you know what flavor. Well, you know two of the flavors. So, the David's Tea is the gross one. No surprise. I think it's gross. I'm sorry if you love it. But the flavor today is cotton candy. I cannot... Cotton candy is honestly one of my least favorite flavors. Like, I don't like cotton candy at all. I don't know what it is. It just... Bleh, bleh. I mean, maybe if I'm at, like, a county fair and it's, like, a fresh thing of cotton candy, I could, I could get behind that. Maybe. But then I would probably get sick because I just really despise overly sweet things. And the Adagio tea is blueberry something-something pancake. Honeybush blueberry pancake. Which I actually am really excited about that one. That one smells delicious. And I really liked the, um, they had a honey bush banana nut one, which I think was like the first tea I tasted. So that's one that I definitely want to buy. I'm excited about that. Okay, we're going to taste these. We're going to take my little steepers out. And of course, we're going to do the David's tea. The David's tea is always in a different mug. And I put the Adagio tea in the mug that Stacy sent me. So this one is the cotton candy. Yeah, I hate it. I hate it so bad. I would honestly rather have licorice than that. <laughs> I hate it. It's just like sickly sweet. Let me know if you are a cotton candy fan or not. That would be fun. We can still be friends if you like cotton candy, but I hate it. Okay, this one is blueberry pancake. This is good. This, this also feels... Like, this is a surprising adagio in that it tastes a little overly sweet. But I don't hate it. This really literally tastes like blueberry pancakes with syrup. But not in, like, a sickly sweet way. But in just a, like, yeah, that's what that tastes like. But it has, like, the undertones of the tea in there that makes it just, like, delicious. Like, herbally goodness. Yeah, I'm a fan of that. I like that one. I don't... Would I buy that one? I think I would. I think I would. Okay. My camera battery is going to die, so let's talk about the books that I'm reading. So I did finish uh, Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. And I, I feel like 
I feel like this is a five star book for me. And I, I want to talk about that for just a minute because I feel like the message in this book is very powerful. I feel like it talks about a lot of things that are important, like parenthood. It talks about um, the lives of black writers and black women specifically. It deals with trauma and abuse and how to cope with that and how, even if you don't cope with it very well, like how you can still be overcome that eventually. And that's the theme that I really, really love reading about in books. And all of that is in here and it's laced with the romance, and so you do get a happily ever after. You you definitely get a happily ever after in here, which I am very excited about. Um, but, so the overall book, as a book, a book that feels women's fiction, literary fiction, and romance, I would give it five stars. As a romance, I think the romance is probably three and a half to four, and that's mostly just because I wanted more of it. Like, the romance that we got in here was definitely very epic feeling. Like, the hero is so gone for the heroine, and she is so gone for him, too. And I just love a story like that, especially when it feels like, you know, they had a meeting early, and then life drew them apart, and then they find each other again. Like, I love second chance romances like that. I love the idea of, like, love conquering all. I love the idea of soulmates finding each other again later in life. I just feel like it's so hopeful and beautiful, and that's exactly what this was. There were some moments in this book that were very heavy. Like, I would say there's quite a, I would say if you are concerned about, like, abuse, trauma, there's self-harm, um, death of loved ones, parental abuse, I, I, would, I would say trigger warning for all of those things. This book is deals with heavy topics and at times it feels very heavy and because of how heavy it feels i as a romance i was hoping for a more powerful and a little bit more expansive happily ever after in the end because it it is a very brief ending a very brief happily ever after you know like you don't get a whole lot of closure there which is something that i was really hoping for but, like, the this book is just a powerhouse book. It's doing some really expansive work that's really thought-provoking, and I think it's talking about things that are really important. And the love story that we do get is beautiful. Seriously, it's so beautiful. I just... I wanted a little bit more of that. And, and it's interesting that Kennedy Ryan talked about this book and gushed about it and recommended it, because I feel like... All of the things that I felt like I wanted more of in this book, Kennedy Ryan delivers for me, you know? And I love that because I love Kennedy and I think this is a beautiful book and it is a five-star read. But if I'm going to recommend it as a romance, I I think that it's it's not quite the romance that I was hoping for. Not that it wasn't there, just that I didn't feel like I got to see enough of it on page, you know? So it's definitely an epic romance, definitely a beautiful, moving story, characters that you love, beautiful writing. Like, this author is an incredible writer. I can't wait to see what else she writes and maybe go take a look at her backlist and see what else she has available because this was fantastic, fantastic writing, like, perfection. But slightly unsatisfying because I wanted more of the romance. Not the way that the romance panned out, but just that I, I wanted to see more of their happiness on page, you know? Just, just because of the heavy themes that it deals with. I really loved the chronic illness representation in here, the chronic pain. I thought that was really accurately depicted and very beautifully handled. So I really enjoyed my reading experience with this. And it is a five story, and I know I keep saying that, but however, at the ending, when you know the book closed, I was kind of like, oh, I was hoping for just a little bit more, a little bit more of them together, more time with them together, especially because they spent so much time apart, you know? So, but again, beautifully powerful book. And I'm really happy that this is categorized as a romance because I think that it's going to bring more attention to our genre. So loved it. Five stars, um, you know, with a few, a few disclaimers. So I, the, the physical book that I'm reading just barely started is The Bully by Sophie Lark. I'm very excited about this. I know that he, this is the book three in her Kingmaker series. This is the spinoff of the Brutal Birthright series. This is basically like a Hogwarts school for mafia kids. I really have loved book one and two, and I'm super excited about this one. 
And I know from what Sophie has said that he has, the hero in this book has a big redemption arc, which I am so excited for because that's one of my favorite things. So my camera battery is going to die. I'm going to end this video here. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this, my friends. If you've made it this far, please feel free to leave me a Christmas tree. And I'll see y'all in my next video.